What it is, y'all? It is your old boy, Pilk, and I'm coming back at you today with more Damachi. And of course, we're talking today about the incoming banners. Now, uh, once again, I tried to have this out for you guys earlier, but there's some kind of missing information, which we'll talk about in a moment that does kind of weigh over this a little bit. But first, let's talk about our new incoming unit, starting with Reveria. Now, old girl here uh, is really designed for Record Buster. Now, both these new units, her and Finn, are both uh, Record Buster bosses. So you can kind of expect they're going to be good for Record Buster. Uh, though I think of the two, Finn really has more uses, but we'll talk about him in a moment. First things first, for her, skill number one, and I know you guys like to see the skill sets, but this is the only screenshot I've got until she drops in the game. And I want to get this out before they drop, because I know people are going to start blowing their iris on these units right away. And I want to get this out early, so pardon the lack of visual context, but look at these stats! <laughs> what more do you really want to see right at the moment? These stats are really awesome. Uh, skill 1 for her is going to be Foe Singular, Mid-Fire Magic Attack, and Magic Resist and Fire Resist, both down 30% for 2 turns. She's a great debuffer for the Fire Team. Skill 2 is a Foe Singular, High Fire Magic Attack with Ultra Penetration Rate, Self Magic Fire Damage, Magic and Fire Damage, 70% for 3 turns. Um, that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. 70% is a huge, 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 huge stat. So, not the biggest we've seen, but huge nonetheless. Uh, remember, remember some units back in the day when they did, when double S stats were like the thing, and they would get like strength or magic at 70%, 75%, that was killer. We're getting both at 70%. With on top of these stats, these units are going to be just absolutely just disgustingly broken. Skill three is a foe singular once again. Everything on this is foe singular. Uh, foe singular super fire magic attack with ultra critical rate and temporary magic buff extends debuffs by two two turns. So pretty awesome that you probably don't need that if I'm honest, but I think. And I've talked about it yesterday a little bit. I think this is a clue as to what Finn is going to do as the new Record Buster boss tonight. I feel like Finn might remove buffs. I don't know um, that for certain. But being that we have all these units that are generally very specialized for the incoming uh, events, her extending debuffs might be kind of proof of the pudding that maybe they're trying to make Haruhime a little less important. I don't know. I don't see how that's possible with her healing and everything like that. I just don't see her being replaced until we get a better unit that does the same kind of stuff. But they might be trying to kind of hint here that the buffing isn't as important. Like, because you could rebuff with her very easily, and Finn for that matter. But extending the debuffs by two turns means to me Finn might remove buffs. I just get that feeling. I'm, I get that feeling. But we'll see what happens when it actually drops tonight. Um... Just my little uh, head cannon, I guess. Uh, special arts for her is a foe singular once again. Ultra fire magic attack for every magic and fire buff on self. Skill damage plus 50%. So, yeah, she's going to hit like an absolute truck. I cannot wait. I'm going to do my best to try to MLB her tonight. So we can actually test her out in Record Buster and see how good she is. She should be pretty broken and it'll be awesome to witness. Passives. Wind resist plus 25%. Counters are Fire Element. Counter Damage is plus 50%. She gets Magic 35%, Dex 25%, and she's a Dragon Killer, which makes you going to make her absolutely awesome for the incoming uh, uh, Familia Rush. So, yeah. Lots to digest on her. She is going to be absolutely broken for all of these upcoming events. And I am definitely looking forward to at least trying to MLB her. I don't know if we'll actually manage it, but we're going to try tonight. Let's talk about Finn, because Finn is probably the one I'm most hyped for out of these two units. Uh, Finn is uh, first skill. Once again, look at these stats. That is just south of a triple S stat. Um, I know somebody asked, triple S stats a thing. Triple S stats have been a thing for quite a while. Um, and bear in mind, there's no CP in these units. So this is at zero CP. You get this guy up to, like, CP level, what, 10? That's triple S stat. Easy easy so yeah but these are also fully ascended and fully bonded so do bear that in mind he ain't gonna look this beefy with just like one or two bonds in him you gotta mlb him 
and fully ascend him for that to be the case. But, but, skill number one, foes plural, fast, high, light, physical attack with ultra uncounter rate, physical resist, and light resist, minus 30% for two turns. Good debuff, very good debuff. Skill two is a foes plural, super, and this is the one that kills me, super light physical attack with ultra uncounter rate, physical resist, and light resist, I'm sorry, S <laughs> Misspoke here. I was reading skill one again. Uh, skill two is a foes plural super light physical attack with ultra penetration rate, temporary strength boost, and self strength and light damage plus 60% for two turns. So, yeah. If you're going after Otaro in Wargame, remember, Otaro to get his best hit has to. This, I mean, I'm, I'm going to base this guy on, on like, is he going to be an Otaro breaker? Otaro has to do his buff on one turn and then his big attack on the next. Now, you can still do multi-attack damage and then he'll still hit like a truck. This guy comes out of the gate and he's like, buff, by the way, that's also my main hit. So if you're looking for a dude that can break Otaro in Wargame, this is the dude, okay? Uh, he buffs and does like major AoE damage just with that one attack. He's pretty nuts. Pretty nuts. Skill 3 is a foe singular. Highlight physical attack with ultra critical. For every strength buff, he gets self skill damage plus 30%. So bear in mind here, while these aren't generally the best things for Record Buster, I want you to pay close attention to what he, what's going on here. He's got, and we've seen this actually before, he's got one skill in the middle, that's his buff, and then a skill on either end that's specialized either for AoE attacks or for single target attacks. So basically, he's kind of like a jack of all trades type unit. Now, the best part about him that we don't see too terribly often that middle one is a super physical or a super AoE attack, super, super level AoE attack. And then his other ones are just kind of one's a debuff and one's a record buster level, you know, uh, super buff attack. So where he just buffs his buffs, <laughs> for lack of a better way to put it. So, this dude is going to be good in just every realm of game. If you're not after this dude, you're out of your damn mind. He's going to be awesome. Uh, specialized for him is a foes plural. So, where Ogre was foes singular, he's foes, foes plural. Ultra light physical attack with ultra unguard rate for every strength buff on himself. Skill damage plus 40% and 40% chance to seal. So those of you working on ailment teams, he's going to be a good ailment unit. Look how busted this guy is for, for a war game, first of all. Let me just say this. Dude not only comes out of the gate with a single target attack, or I say, say a multi-target attack that is super class and has his buffs attached, uh, his agility is off the damn charts, so he's going to be a really early attacker. Buff that agility a little bit and watch him go to town. He's going to come out of the gate with a, you know, turn one with a crazy good hit. And if he managed to get far enough into the fight that he has to use his SA, his SA is a plural attack with an even bigger buff, basically the same buff that a single target attack gets, and a little higher, in fact, and he has a chance to seal with that. Dude's a freaking monster. Like, this dude is just absolutely nuts. Uh, very much looking forward to it. If anybody has any arguments against him, I'd be glad to hear it in the comments section, but I really don't I don't foresee him much better than him uh, on any banner upcoming basically until the anniversary. That is worth mentioning, though, guys. We are just, what, five, six weeks away from an anniversary? Uh, the JP anniversary that usually kicks off a little bit early. So you're talking, by early June, you want to be prepared and ready for whatever's coming on the JP anniversary. And those usually are very relevant units that stay relevant for a long time. Look how many people still use Galamus. How many people still use Argonaut and Crozo. How many people still use Almina, uh, Fina for that matter. There's All those units are still used, not to the same extent they were when they first dropped, but they're still very widely used. Plus, if you don't have some of those units, that banner, the banner will probably come back and rerun slightly before that. So this is a good opportunity to start thinking about where is the game going and what are you going to be doing for the anniversary i'm thinking of a good challenge for myself for the anniversary and i'm, I'm not ready to announce it yet but i'm thinking i might do something fun for that but either way you might want to start saving 
I will say he's awesome. If you're going to summon, absolutely an awesome unit to summon for. But uh, you also want to consider what is the anniversary going to bring? Is it going to bring something better? Typically, the anniversary units last a really long time in the game. So, tough call there. I don't know what to tell you on that one. We do get about, what? I'm going to go ahead and limit and say, if, you're, if you can manage uh, King 1, which is not that insanely difficult now anything more than that is pretty crazy if you didn't manage king three and i don't know top top five thousand in, in record buster you'll be sitting pretty on iris for the next month so if you want to like blow your load now and then just wait that actually might be a very wise thing to do but they're going to start wrapping some fun stuff on us and they really already have so we'll talk about that in a moment as well but i digress these two units are fan freaking tastic. Uh, I love them so much, and I will be MLBing them. I did talk about his passives. His passives are counters are light element, penetration damage plus ten percent, dark resistance down. Or I'm sorry, dark resistance up. Uh, thank goodness, dark resistance up thirty five percent. So those dark teams that have been going around lately, looking at you, Otaro. I said he's an Otaro breaker. Strength, agility, and dex plus twenty five percent. Just saying. And he's got the Dragon Killer skill, which you're going to need for Familiar Rush. So, dude is absolutely busted. Busted unit. Let's talk about Elven Rondo, though. Now, we have an Elven, Elven Rondo uh, replay incoming. And we actually got a slight upgrade to at least Ryu. Now, I'm, I'm going to say I'm not as familiar with the other three units on here because... I never really used them as much, if I'm completely frank. So, a uh, big shout out to my man Yoko, who came through with all of the uh, old and new uh, skills on these units, because, frankly, there was there's nothing that's been posted in the game yet. Uh, well, it's they've been changed, but it hasn't been added to the news, for whatever reason. But here are the old and new stats of all of the units on the Elven Rondo banners. So, first we've got Dressed Royal Riveria. Okay, I uh, believe this is the old one. Yes, old. Uh, so, her first skill, uh, Frost Nova, foes, plural, mid-water magic attack with high encounter rate, water resist, minus 25% for three turns, now becomes mid-water magic attack with high encounter rate, magic resist, and water resist, minus 25% uh, for three turns, so they add the water resist to that. Chilling Blast, foes, singular, high water magic attack with temporary magic boost. High water magic attack with temporary magic boost and high penetration rate. So they add high penetration rate to that. And the third skill, foes plural, high water magic attack with temporary magic boost and ultra unguard rate. Becomes high water magic attack with temporary magic boost, ultra unguard rate, and damage received type attack all in single targets. All and single targets plus 20% for two turns. That's actually a really nice skill right there. But once again, she's more of a support unit, honestly. Uh, the SA, uh, Diamond Trail, Foes, plural, Ultra Water Magic Attack with Temporary Magic Boost becomes Foes, plural, Ultra Water Magic Attack with Temporary Magic Boost and Ultra Critical Rate. Not really the greatest thing. Uh, and, uh, her passive Demon Killer, or, I'm sorry, Demon, Dragon Killer passive doesn't change. Now, the rest of her passives here, uh, she was, um... Uh, magic plus 20%, critical damage plus 10%, fire resistance plus 35%, dragon killer and agility and dex plus 15% becomes... Oh, wow. When countering and attacking regular magic attack with a foe, either water element, they change this a lot. Critical damage 10%, fire resist 10%, dragon killer and magic and agility plus... So, so they change the first skill. She loses that magic plus 20% and gains that, which... Kind of will pay dividends. Uh, looks like the last one, too. Agility index plus 15 becomes agility magic agility index plus 25. So, actually, they add it there in the end. So, very, very nice there. Uh, Blessed L. Philvis. Skill number one is uh, Wind Force. Allies water and wind attack damage plus 35%. Uh, and ailment cure becomes... Ailment cure and water and uh, wind attack damage 35% for four turns. I don't think that changes. It change, doesn't change at all. 
Sonic Wind. Just the wording out of changed. Foe, singular. Midwind magic attack with temporary magic boost becomes Foe Singular. Win Midwind magic attack with temporary magic boost and allies physical resist and magic resist plus 25% for two turns. Really good skill that becomes. And Vitalize. Vitalize. It sounds like something my neighbors would serve for dinner. Allies. Mid HP heal and removes all magic debuffs and assist skills becomes. Fast mid HP heal. Was it wasn't fast before, was it? No, it was not fast before. Mid HP heal and removes all magic debuffs except assist skills. So adds the fast modifier there. B Blink Edge. Blink Edge. Blink Edge Tornado. Foes. This is the her essay. Foes. Ultra Wind Magic Attack with 50% stun becomes uh Foes Ultra Wind Magic Attack with Ultra Critical Rate of 50% stun. So it gets a pretty decent upgrade there. Uh, mostly, you're only going to use that if you're really after, like, you know, a good uh, stun unit, an ailment unit. But uh, most people, if they're, if they're after ailments, are doing essays for them. But who knows? She's got a good heal on her either way. Uh, so for her passives, she was magic 15%, uh, critical rate 10%, earth resist plus 15%, uh, dex plus 10%, endurance and agility 10%, which becomes... When countering and attacking, regular magic attack uh, with wind. Basically, she has wind element to all of her regular attacks and her path and her uh, counters. Uh, critical damage ten percent. Earth uh, resistance plus thirty five percent. I think that's yeah, it's the same one. I think I might have misspoken on that one earlier. Um, magic and endurance and agility twenty five percent and physical resist and magic resist plus ten percent. Good passives on her. Very good passives. Finally, we get to Ryu. Now, I'm, I'm fairly familiar with what Ryu did because uh, she actually got a buff about six months ago and got uh, a strength buff added to her. Now, she still does that. Velocity is a foe, singular, midwind, physical attack, and self-strength 80% for four turns. Uh, now that becomes... Um, yeah, that becomes a velocity, midwind, physical attack... And self-strength, 80%. And wind attack damage, plus 60% for four turns. Uh, Cyclosity. Foe, mid-wind, physical attack, and self-wind attack damage, plus 60% for four turns. Becomes high wind, physical attack damage, and plus 35% for each guard rate reduction skill. So you got to reduce guard rate, which I think is the next one. So they change her build order and completely change that second skill. Third skill, high wind physical attack and physical resist and guard rate minus 25% becomes high wind physical attack and physical resist and wind resist and guard rate minus 25%. So they add a little bit there. SA goes from uh, foe singular ultra wind physical attack with temporary strength boost and ultra penetration to ultra wind physical attack with temporary boost and ultra penetration rate. So big shout out to Yoko for uh, giving me that because I didn't have all that before. And it actually wasn't programmed into the game. I'm sure tonight after everything drops, it's going to be added to the updates. But usually they add this beforehand and it's actually not in there now. So I was kind of at a loss with these and stumbling around. So I appreciate him. You can actually tell this was recorded later because I changed out of my uh, work shirt that I was painting in earlier. But let's go ahead and talk about this unit. Boom. Oops. Yeah. Allies, damage received, attack all targets, minus 10%, physical resist, plus 15%. That's actually a really, really good skill, especially for, like, war game. Yeah, that that is fantastic. So if you're after her, I think I can condone that, most definitely. Of all the units here, I think that's actually probably one of the best. But, again, we have an anniversary coming up, and we don't know what units we're going to get for that. So, be cautious. Uh, the banner will be limited. Though this is two different banners, and both those banners are going to have sales. So, like every non-four star guaranteed, is going to be somewhat discounted. Like it's basically going to be half price. So instead of each banner costing you four thousand iris, it's going to cost you three thousand iris. Your call whether that's an investment you want to make with something coming around the corner, but I'm not too hyped about that. Unfortunately, and if I go out here, not locking that screen up, I go here to the news, and I go to update. 
uh, I'm expecting to see in here where they show the updates to the new units, but they don't show them here. They have last week's, but they don't have this week's unit updates. So we probably won't know all of the updates until later tonight. But once again, I'm going to say with the other banner coming in, I think this is a way better investment, a way better investment uh, for your Iris. But we have a third banner, a fourth banner technically, because these two are just, you know, their own two banners. These two are going to be on brand new banner incoming. We're also getting a Lily banner on Friday. Now, this is going to have another free 11 draw. So maybe you'll get lucky on that. Maybe you won't. It's really, really, really like impossible to tell. But let's talk about the different lilies on here, whether this is worth saving some iris and, and uh, you know, beating up a little bit. So let's go back in here. And let's go to the album. And let's just talk about these lilies for just a moment, okay? And you can almost just go in order here. So the Unbreakable Heart Lily, actually, I like her a lot. I don't have all the bonds of her. Uh, but she's a really interesting unit. Uh, she's one of the newer additions to the game, so having another opportunity to snag her is not such a bad thing. Um, she is not time-limited, so I kind of expect her to get a heroic trial before long. Maybe? Maybe? Hard call on that, because they've been really weird about the heroic trials lately. But I wouldn't... I. It's not out of the realm of possibility that she gets a heroic trial. So if you're only lacking one bond... Maybe hold out for that. I I hate to say that, but I really think for where we're at in the game right now, that might be a wiser option. But, foes plural, fast agility and dex minus 25%. Debuffs your enemies' agility and dex is really awesome. Guard rate and counter rate for all allies up 25%. I like that a lot. Fast. Fast, low, physical water attack. I said foes plural, fast, low physical water attack. Uh, ultra and counter rate, which I like a lot. Ruba's fire, earth, and wind attack damage buffs, except assist skills. And foes again, super water physical attack with ultra and counter rate, max 25% HP poison damage. She's a very, very, very nice unit. Very nice unit. Did I miss one of them? Oh, I'm sorry. Blitz is just the other skill. If you want to know what her essay is, foes, plural, ultra water physical attack with temporary strength boost and ultra on guard rate and water resist minus 50%. Not the end of the world, that, but a very good skill if you've got water teams that you're working on, especially for Record Buster, though she's not really a Record Buster unit. So that does kind of discount that a little bit more. But, uh, you know, all around, not a bad unit by any stretch of the imagination. Now... You've also got this one on there. But like I said, with this Lily, I do expect there to be a heroic trial of her sometime in the near future. Um, I don't know when that'll be. I have no insight on that. But I think, honestly, with everything that's incoming, that might be a wiser way to, to spend your iris. Just save for that. Uh, Magic Lily. <laughs> Harry Potter Lily. Uh, let's talk about her real quick. Boom. 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 And I think there's going to be a ton of lilies on here. I don't think these are going to be the only ones. But I'm going to talk about all the ones that are on the ban on the main image of the banner because I think those are the ones you're going to be mostly in interested in. Uh, so, foes, plural, mid-earth magic attack with uh, ultra penetration rate, status buff, minus two turns. That's kind of nice. I like doing that with some of my foes because it just takes them apart at the seams. It's kind of nice. Foe Singular, High Earth Magic Attack with Temporary Magic Boost and Ultra uh, Penetration Rate. Uh, and... Oh, I forgot the first one. First skill was Foe's Plural, Fast Low Earth Magic Attack with Allies Magic and Earth Attack Damage plus 30%. I'm always critical of those because when those Allies buffs come in, remember, if they've already got a buff, it doesn't count. And your units should already have their own buffs. Not that everyone does, honestly, but... And I've seen, I've seen you, those units actually, case in point, the latest wealth. Who I was very critical of and still holds his own. Um, I've seen those units do do very, very nice things. So, while I am critical of that, I have eaten my words quite a few times on that. But, either way, uh, pretty decent unit. 
just not end of the world stuff for me. Uh, Longing Bride Lily. Okay. Foes plural, midwater magic attack with ultra encounter rate and ally status debuff minus one turn. Not the end of the world that. I would like to see two turns on that. She needs a she needs a little increase on that at some point in time. Foes plural, fast low water magic attack and removes all guard and heal buffs except assist skills. I've been hit with that and that's not a fun one to get hit with. And Hydroblast, foes, high water magic attack with allies, magic and water attack damage plus 30%. So the Lilies are always basically support units. So unless you really need support units... Uh, but once again, that the most recent one I do like a lot. Bear in mind... Bear in mind with, these, uh, with this banner. Yes, it is a discounted banner. That's kind of nice. Once again, you're talking 3,000 Iris investment, though, to go all the way. And this banner is not designed for you to acquire a new Lily. This banner is designed... You got one or two bonds left of a Lily... And you're kind of gambling on that on that right. So this is not for chasing unit. This is for chasing a final bond or two. But let's get into it here. Foe singular high thunder physical attack with temporary strength boost and uh, received type single attack damage plus fifteen percent for your foe, obviously, uh, for four turns. That I like a lot. That actually can take like a record buster opponent apart. High Thunder Physical Attack with Temporary Strength Boost. Allies Thunder Attack Damage plus 20% for three turns. I've used her with that Thunder Otaro, and that actually is a really, really, really good combo. Mostly because, once again, she's a good buff. But she also does focusing your little low Thunder Physical Attack. Self Strength 80% for four turns. She really, to, to come alive, she needs a better Thunder buff. But she's not the worst. Uh, you could definitely use her on a team, but I think she's fallen off the map a little bit, honestly, in the damage realm. Uh, her stats, once again, if we fully ascend an MLB her, her stats are decent. Decent, but not under the world stuff. Like, she's not getting a triple S stat anytime soon. She needs a big, big, big buff to get there. And with only 20% thunder, she's better support than she is hitter. The other Lily that's on this banner is the Assist Lily up here. Uh, she is a heal, physical resist, magic resist, and thunder resist minus 15%. Once she's MLB, if she's level 60, she's only 10%. Um, you know, actually a pretty decent unit, that too. Uh, that heal could come in clutch. But, I'm still going to say, remember, this isn't the only Lilies on this banner. So, uh, the banner is probably going to be like the Hestia banner, where it's just like all of the major Hestias, all the major Lilies in this case, that we've had throughout the course of the game. Now, the newer ones usually have higher rates or whatever, but the odds of you getting the one you want are fairly slim unless you go all the way in. And if you go all the way in, that's 3,000 Iris. We are a very, very, very short time away from the Japanese anniversary. When that happens, you are going to want a lot of free-to-play Iris. So, my recommendation is probably just leave these banners alone. I would still definitely, definitely, without question, go after Finn and Riveria. I absolutely think that if you're going to spend Iris, it is worth chasing these two. They're absolutely fantastic. You're talking a 4,000 Iris investment, unless you whale, but... I think it's. I think these two are going to pay dividends for quite a bit of time in this game, unless the meta just shifts that drastically, which I don't think it will. Even the last meta shift was subtle enough that it wasn't instantaneously like here's a whole bunch of new units that make everything else irrelevant. It took a while for those units to become irrelevant. So, and even then, they do tend to give some units. Decent buffs to keep them up to date. Case in point, if you look at the Elven Rondo units. Now, while not all of them are going to be crazy hitters, as far as support goes, they still keep close enough, I'll say. So, that's kind of the video, guys. I really think her and Finn, Finn especially, more than anybody else, so unbelievably worth. Uh, if you guys want to see, I have a list of all the dragon killers here. Um, there we are. Bam, I'll have to switch into my other screen there. Bam. These are all the dragon killers. So, Reveria Finn, Galamus, if you've got him. If not, he'll be back before long. That's Tsubaki, the Reveria and uh, Ryu that we just talked about, 
and Determination Well for all Dragon Killers. And those are all going to be great units for tonight's event in Family Rush. So hopefully that's everything that you could possibly want to know for the incoming events. And that is really a lot of data. Now, if I did miss anything, let me know in the comments section down below. But I really think if you're asking me what to summon on, my answer is still the same. These two, and then save your iris. You've got just about a month, five weeks, maybe six absolute max, before we are going to get a brand new event with brand new stuff. And frankly, we have so many, so many tickets incoming. Uh, tomorrow night, we're actually going to be getting, or Friday, which I should say, we're going to be getting uh, two four-star tickets. We're going to get a free four-star. Well, if you're level 100, you're going to get two four-star tickets. Rank 100, you're going to get two four-star tickets. We're going to get 100 three-star tickets coming in in the next couple of weeks. All of this stuff, save your iris, guys. I think that's the smartest decision right now unless you're after these two and then i can't blame you because they're really 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 good but be cautious i wouldn't spend anything not a cent from this point well okay if you were to whale I, I can't blame you for that one but i would save not an iris one not single one from this point until the anniversary i think it's going to pay out personally my opinion just speculation based on the last two years of playing this game but i think it's going to pay out dividends either way that's the video let me know what y'all thought in the comments section down below be really cautious about your summons good luck to you if you do decide to summon like comment share and i will catch you guys on the next one also subscribe and hit the notification bell that's an important one too i don't know why i forgot that one that's one of the most important ones do, do, do that thing do do that